Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. Always good to be with you and to be able to share. And uh, I was thinking of something this morning, Ruth. It's uh, it, isn't it nice, you know, as you begin a day, to realize that you live in New Mexico. Not only because of red and green chili, but oh, right man. now, it's really good because it is. Even though cold for us, nothing like what everybody else is seeing across My, the country. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. love New Mexico, but it, it, it does not get like it does in other places, like no. you say. No, I went outside this morning. Ah, it was in the low 30s. I mean, it was a little, little bit of frost on the car. Mm -hmm. But listen to what is coming. The polar vortex. Now, you've heard of these. I'm not sure I fully grasp. I probably need to read more about the polar vortex and uh, how it develops. But there are temperatures that are going to be hitting the uh, northern plains and the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way, I guess, a little bit to the eastern seaboard that will impact the nation with hu two, uh, wow. 250 million people are going to be impacted by this, with this cold. And it will be colder in some parts of the country than it is in Antarctica. Wow. Is that crazy? It says this is potentially deadly weather. Mm -hmm. You cannot be outside in temperatures like that. Your skin will freeze in minutes, if you can believe it. Now, That's here amazing. Were, here were some of the forecasted wind chills. Um, International Falls, negative 47 degrees. Uh, Fargo, North Dakota, negative 53. Wow. Um, places even like Chicago projected to be negative 43. I, like, like you, I heard yeah. that this could be a once in a lifetime frigid event. Uh, there is a lot of concern for kids being outside, like, you know, schools are being canceled because of wind chill. Mm -hmm. There are some places that are expecting snow. Um, so meanwhile, here in New Mexico, this weekend, we're supposed to be in the mid fifties. Well, you know, even above what, zero. Yeah. So, <laughs> but let's talk about some of the people like even in, I believe it's Chicago. Okay. Where they're really scrambling or really trying hard to protect the homeless people, mm -hmm. the homeless, homeless population that is out there. Because I've, I've thought about that here, even in our city. I think it's so cold tonight. We're, hopefully these people have a place to go. And it's important because we have many ministries that do help them and I'm yes. grateful for that. But when you think about how cold it is, it, it really is frightening to think that maybe you'd have a fatality if it was so cold out mm -hmm. there and they had nowhere to go. Um, no, and that'd be frightening, thing. but they ha they do have um, in Chicago. They're opening warming facilities. I guess is what they're calling so, them. I think it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Emanuel said that they were opening. I think two more 24-hour warming uh, facilities. That, and you know, I, you know that, again, have you counted your blessings lately? Yes. If you have a house, if you have a roof over your head, if you have heat inside of your home, what a privilege it is! Can you? Yes. Uh, it's really yes. hard to conceive being outside in some of these temperatures. So that's yeah. something that's gonna be hitting much of yes. the population. Uh, th now here is another one that is just, it kind of goes hand in hand with this, but it's, it's almost bizarre. Illinois police, of course, we're talking about how this is gonna be hitting, of course, the Chicago area, but other places as well. And it hasn't gotten quite cold, that cold there yet, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. Police sh shared a ridiculous uh, driver's triple digit they're over 100, I think they were riding 115 miles an hour in yes. a 35 on a slushy road. Uh -huh. And uh, police shared a copy of the ticket onto Facebook saying, look, don't think yes. we're not patrolling. Don't, don't think that other people out there aren't driving like this person was driving. Yes. And uh, they, this was a go to jail type of offense. Oh yes, I think so. And you know, that's what's frightening is that you're driving down the street. Have you ever been driving down and thinking, I put, you put a lot of trust in people that are next to you to do the right thing. I've thought of that before as I'm driving down, mm -hmm. down the road and you have people next to you on both sides and you're like, ever think about how aware they have to be just like you are. Hopefully you're using your turning, your turning signals, or, you know, to be, courteous as you're driving down the road, but at the same time that they are sober and alert and not going to take advantage of that. And then there are times you go down the street, or at least I do, and people are speeding and I'm like, mm -hmm. where is a police officer? I mean, just like taking off yeah, well, down you the know road. Where I, where I see that is when you come on the, the freeway 
and you come around, you know, you're driving along now, you know, on the freeway, most people are going to be driving 60, 65 miles an hour. 70, yeah. Okay. And, and then, I mean, then you're past like you're standing still. So you know that person has to be going 10, 15, that? 20 miles an hour zipping around you. That is a frightening thing because if you get hit at those kind of speeds, bad deal. We were driving into work yesterday mm -hmm. and came across a, an accident where the driver had apparently oh, the man. two people that had crashed terrible. and it knocked the tire off of the vehicle. And the axle. Is that, is that what part, it's called? Part of the axle, the, the axle. Where it connects in. I'd never seen that before. It was amazing but scary at the same time. Yeah. So d drive with caution. Uh, of course, you know, we're not expecting any type of temperatures or no, any type of snow like they're expecting. No, but can you imagine in a 35 mile an hour speed limit like this article says that someone is, uh, uh, what is it called when they... Um, with the radar? Yeah, at Clock. 115? No. That's I go to really jail even speed, I think. I driving 115 in the city. I period. think that's like go to jail speed. Well, I think where they could said you was. do that? I don't know why mm -hmm. you would. Mm -hmm. The only place that you could even do that, I could even fathom, it'd be on a very straight road with no traffic. I mean, how can you even get to those kind of speeds? But anyway, whatever. Going off on something else, I saw a, um, a piece uh, on the news of a driver, two drivers who had had a, like a little scuffle, a little interaction. A kerfuffle? And this other person in a, in a, on the freeway had their car phone, their phone out. They took a video. Somehow, the, the older man was hanging on to the hood of the car I of the other saw guy. A little piece Did you of that. see that going yes. down the highway? And, I and that know car, the highway. that car, the freeway, that car took off, and he is hanging on. How terrible! Over a just, they got upset at each other, and then it shows the person in the car with a camera taking footage of it. Meanwhile, another pedestrian, once they stopped it, another pedestrian comes with a gun and he tells the driver to stop the car. Now, the, the guy with the gun was a licensed carrier. He was that, carry. he was, everything was good with him, but can you imagine what that guy, I think nope. he was in his 55 or 65 years old, hung onto the of that car. I just can't imagine. I just can't understand. Being that angry. Now, I don't know if it's that we just hear of more things because, you know, we're so interconnected state to state. I mean, back in the days, you wouldn't know what happened in Tucson or Tupelo or Chicago or New York true. for days. That's true. You, you just wouldn't know. Yeah. And, uh, but now, you know, it's on the internet. Yeah. You have footage. As some people say, the <laughs> interweb. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it, it's right there for you to, to grab. So maybe it's things like this have always happened. It just seems weird. Okay. Well, uh, another thing that's uh, really rising in the news is that the three freshman Democratic uh, congressional folk who have three ladies uh -huh. who have taken uh, to, the, uh, to the floor of the, of the U.S. Capitol are really pulling on the Democratic Party, pulling it to the left, but at the same time really angering their own, aggressive. their own leadership. And this includes Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rashid Tlaib, and Ilhan Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, the two latter ones that I mentioned there are uh, Muslim women. And mm -hmm. of course, Ocasio-Cortez is a self-proclaimed socialist. And uh, they are really, I mean, a lot of their statements that they're making have been proven by fact checkers to be really not right. So they have to true. go back and... But they don't um, back off correct, easily. Correct themselves. Yeah, they don't want to really correct themselves. Mm. They just want to stick to their guns and keep firing. Um, but it is really a. It, it, a lot it of seems like it's leadership. a really confrontational time. Like everyone is just like in, in your face, and that's that's what the article is saying. They're very aggressive, and even promoting it because there was a treat by Alexandria Ocasio Cortez that says they'll tell you you're too loud that you need to wait your turn, ask the right people for permission, and she says, just do it anyway. So well, there's also a claim by Ms. Cortez that the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, I don't think so. But in the midst of all of this, uh, we, we, I do think every person needs to be more courageous in standing for truth and not letting people just... Uh, march their agendas, however far-flung they may be, oh. down your, down your 
throat, really. I mean, I hate to say it that way, but that's just kind of the way it is. So, well, there's a lot in the news. Not all of it's good today. I uh, hope you'll stick with Not us, though. Bad. We do have a, an update of some things that are happening right here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting that I think will encourage you. Today we're going to go behind the scenes and uh, show friends the things that are taking place here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting as new HD equipment is now starting to, to, to come online. Yes, And I exciting. know that we're, you know, we keep telling you we're close, we're close, and the same thing is true uh, because some of the things from engineering haven't been installed. I mean, yes. you, you can only do it as quickly as they can get the pieces here and they can put them in place. And uh, even though we started this process about a month ago, and we did start it then, yes. uh, we're still not quite there. Yeah. There are three mechanisms to give now. Three we ways to have give. Gone, just stepped away from the text to give, at least for now, because folks just weren't really utilizing it. What is the main way that people like to give? Or do you see one way that's oh, more uh, popular? Everyone loves to send their, their donation by mail. And okay. so that, that's, that if that works for you, send it to 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico. 87109. If you'd like to call in your donation, you can do that at 505-884-8355, extension 101, or you can visit us on the website at kazq32.org and give safely and securely there. You can also set up an automated uh, time that it will do that, make that donation for you every month. So if you'd like to do that, then you won't have to worry about it anymore. You can also find the program guide there. We've added many new programs. I hope you have enjoyed them. I know I have as they've come on board. And um, just check everything out there uh, almost, on the website. Uh, eight, nine programmers yes. that are new, new I programmers. think. Or some yeah, of them are, still, one are still, still rolling out on. and we're in the process mm -hmm. of finalizing a few of them. Exciting stuff. You know, it's so important. It's so important. Good family programming is so important. It's so hard. There is so it is much difficult trash to find something. On television right now. It's just discouraging. The things that, that promote um, all sorts of abnormal, ungodly principles. The language is abusive. The, the uh, level of sexuality and violence is, is really a, 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 just an ongoing high and moving forward in a terrible way. So that's why we need family programming and that's why Alpha Omega Broadcasting is making a difference. Thank you for your support. Hey, it's me, Ruth, and you're invited over to cook with me. I'm leaving the studio and coming right next door, bringing my best kitchen tips and family recipes straight to your home. I'll have my friends coming over with their favorite home-cooked meals and memories to share with you. So be my guest and come on in with Ruth Next Door every weekday at 5, only on Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Today I want to share with you again an update of what's taking place here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. We're in fact going to go head over to Master Control and uh, look at some of the things that are going on there. And, and we are moving forward with the HD transition. Now let me just give you kind of a little bit of a backstory, and then we're going to talk about where we are now and then we're going to show you some of the things that have been uh, delivered and have actually been installed and we're still waiting and working with the engineers. A lot of things have been ordered, a few of the last pieces to get us moving. Some of the things that we started off with uh, talked about, you know, we needed to raise about $50,000. And we started on this project probably, uh, maybe not quite a year ago, but roughly in that range. And uh, for the last year or so, we raised about, I don't know, 35, maybe we're up to $37,000 because we have been making some progress in the month of January. Um, our target moved from 50 to 60 and, and it's just the cost of equipment. Uh, we initially hoped it would be around 50,000. That was the estimate, but you know, when, when the things actually were ordered, it ended up being a little bit more than that. 
Um, we first of all took delivery of the new encoder, and I'll be glad to show you that in just a minute. We're going to show you that. That encoder is online. In fact, we are utilizing that. The picture is now an HD picture uh, for you in terms of what they call the aspect ratio. And you may, you know, you, you have to really be paying attention to notice this, but the way that it letter boxes uh, your picture is a little different. I, if you know what you're looking for, you probably can see that. A way that the uh, engineer describes it is that it's being put in an HD envelope, okay? But the content, and this is why you haven't seen a visual change as much as we, would, we are going to see, the content is still being fed to you in an SD uh, uh, capacity. So it's a, a 480 concept instead of eventually going to make it to 720. So, so you're going to see more resolution there for you. As we think of that, um, we, we are now have the automation system that has arrived and we are now acclimating to that system. You know, you can't just, it's not plug and play. You know, grab it, plug it in, you know, hook up one cable and voila. Instead, it takes, you have to learn, there's a, there's a, a learning curve. And so our staff is having me learning that learning curve of how to adapt and, and how to utilize this brand new automation system. That's pretty much been accomplished over the course of the last week. And now we're getting close to now the, the final uh, integration of those systems. There's also been having to be doing some things in the realm of the uh, emergency alert system so that we can send you emergency alert sys, uh, signals uh, in HD because that is required as well to make sure that we can do that. Now, how have we been doing? Well, of late, uh, praise God, your faithful giving has made a difference. And the month of December was a great month of giving. The month of January has been a strong month. And as we're moving into February, we've got to keep that momentum going because we still need to raise about $23,000. Now, I say that because we, we're starting the year at about twenty five, dollars and we've probably picked up a couple thousand, maybe even a little more than that, over the course of the month of January 2019 as we're working hard on this project. Do your best today. Remember, there's three mechanisms to give. You can give online, www.kazq32.org. You can certainly uh, go just mail it in to Alpha Omega Broadcasting, 4501 Montgomery Boulevard, Northeast, Albuquerque, 87109. Or pick up the phone. Some folks just like to do that. They don't want to mail. They don't want to deal with going online. They just rather uh, have that giving mechanism available to use a debit or credit card that way. So call us at 505-884-8355, extension number 101, and that would be the best connecting point. I want us to get into to master control so that we can actually see some of the things that your giving has been impacting. So let's go over to master control right now. We've come on over into master control today, and I uh, did this on purpose. Uh, I've had Howard Hawley, our production manager, with us because I've been sharing with you about the brand new automation system, which is a, a really, it's, it's critical. We have to have that online to be able to integrate the HD content. Howard, maybe you could just give us a quick update. How are things coming? I know that this system isn't quite live, but we think within the next few days we can go live with this, which really will transform the picture quality, won't it? Um, yeah, it sure will. Uh, yeah. In the next, I would say Monday, we should be able to go live with it. Um, we are being pretty, optimistic. Yeah, well, <laughs> we understand how to make the new system works, and it's very similar to our other system. Uh, so there's not going to be a steep learning curve uh, regarding, so that, that's a good thing. Now, we've had it on the ground here for about a week or so, yeah. and uh, we, engineering wanted us to have a chance to be able to acclimate. Yeah. Uh, it's not exactly the same. I mean, it's you, it's not exactly changes. Yeah, it's not exactly the same. The interface is a little different, uh, but the concept is is identical to what we're used to. Um, and that's a plus. That is a plus. So we're not having to learn a whole completely different routine and uh, uh, interface. Tell, so tell us a little bit. Do you? have the ability as program content is sent to us. Now some of this content is going to be sent to us in HD and that's right. going to be the stuff that looks the best. A lot of what we're producing here now at Alpha Omega Broadcasting, we can produce in HD as well. But some of the ministries will be sending us content that is uh, not transitioned up. I would say about maybe 30 percent of it in yeah. initially, yeah. 30, 35 percent, maybe even in the 20 percent range. I'm not sure. That though you can still is still upgraded or up 
uh, and you have a word for it, you well, it, upscale it so that it can run in, in the new uh, HD envelope, right? Well, yeah, it'll run in the new H, HD envelope, but it won't be HD. It'll be letterboxed on the side, mm -hmm. um, so it'll still have the same 4 by 3 aspect ratio that standard uh, definition has, right. um, or whatever aspect ratio they send to us, okay. it'll, it'll maintain that. Um, so, and so I say that, so you're going to see a large portion of the broadcast day transition uh, to this new HD uh, content. Some of it, of course, you can never make it look any better than where it starts. I guess that's the best way of saying it. So if a, a ministry sends in to us here at Alpha Omega standard definition, we can't just with a, uh, with a magic wand turn it into HD. Uh, we can change the aspect ratio uh, of it so it letterboxes it correctly, but yeah, we can't yeah. change it otherwise. Right. You, kind you, of. You can't really upscale it to HD, you know, without upscaling the well, pixelation, it never, it never the never gets any the better noise, than yeah. where it starts. Right. Um, yeah. One thing, uh, there's some things I do like about the new system. It has some nice features, and I think will be quick. You know, a lot of times we get media, and we have to transcode them by hand here in the house from one format to now, another. transcode, that was the word I was looking for. What does transcoding mean? Well, we're going to change the format, say, from a .mov to an MPEG-2 file, which okay. is, this is what uh, the system, MPEG-2 is the industry standard uh, for professional quality broadcast video. And, uh, but we get all kinds of different flavors of video, and we need to transcode them. In the past, we would transcode by hand. Well, this has a uh, what's called a watch folder. You just throw whatever you want in that watch folder, and it'll spit out an MPEG-2, and it's great. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I want to walk over here. Howard, thanks for spending yeah. some time with us. We're going to walk over to uh, what we would consider to be what they call our RF racks. And uh, so we're going to come kind of come around the bend. And as you get over to this side, now this is some of the gear that is already online and has been, they've begun to do the implementation of, of course, as we've had to do some upgrades to our emergency alert system so that it can handle uh, distributing emergency alerts in HD uh, as well as in SD. And then over to the, to the far side, over where we're going here, you're going to see that the, we now have online a uh, HD encoder, which is working to uh, bring the, the new system in place. So I just want you kind of to see some of the other pieces. Now then there's a lot of what they call like the glue. And the, those are the, the, you know, the wiring and the pieces that are not as exciting, maybe distribution amplifiers and things of that nature that make the system run. And some of those last things are some of the things that, that still have to be finaled out by the engineering folks as, the, as we wrap this up. But I just want to remind you, your donations are working. The new equipment is coming in, it's being installed, and it's really making a difference. And your donations of any size help. We had a, a donor who made a large donation toward the end of uh, 2018. Boy, that was a blessing. So if you can send in a donation of $500 or $1,000, or maybe you can send in $300. You know what? Those things help us get over the, the hump and get us there. We're probably at roughly at about, I think we've raised maybe uh, in the range of thirty-five dollars to $37,000. Still need to get another $23,000 uh, or so raised as we finish this up. So. That gives us some uh, behind the scenes looks. Hopes that gives you some information. And thank you for your generous donations. Remember, they're tax deductible. Let's end today by going to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs has so many great pieces of wisdom that apply to our lives. Let's go to Proverbs 29 and pick up the read toward the very end of the chapter, verses 25 through 27. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. 
Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. The righteous despise the unjust, the wicked despise the godly. You know, there's so many great truths in this passage. Let's try to, to jump in right away. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. You cannot live in fear of other people. What you can do, though, is trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. If the Lord speaks to you something that puts you in what we would say uh, in conflict or uh, puts you at a counterpoint to people, do things God's way. Don't give in to what people want because people, uh, their opinions are always changing, but God yes. is your true source of safety. Yes. He is the one who has a way of protecting us even when the fires get hot. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They said to Nebuchadnezzar, even if God doesn't save us and you throw us into the fiery furnace, mm -hmm. we know that our God could save us, but if he doesn't, we're still not going to serve you. That's the kind of courage and faith that we have to have. Not easy to do, but something we need. You know, in my own life, this, this verse 25 really speaks to me. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. When, I, when we began a few years ago with this new uh, format for Spectrum, um, I, I was receiving mail voicemails that weren't very nice and they weren't supportive and they're and it just really affected me and I began to find myself closing my mouth during our dialogue or hmm. even during our devotion and holding back and even as I was sitting on this set uh, a few years ago when I did when I did that I heard the voice of the Lord say to me be bold and do not fear that's good okay so be bold and do not fear is what the Lord says and trusting the Lord means safety. That's what the scripture says. That is so you have to us. not pay attention to the voices around you that are opposing to what the scripture says or opposing what, what the Lord is telling you to do. You have to listen. You make a choice to listen to what the Lord is saying and you choose to be obedient or not, but you will find safety. Trusting him, you will find safety. I want to look at the very last section of this, which is in verse 27. The last sentence says, the righteous despise the unjust, the wicked despise the mm -hmm. godly. Let me just tell you, have you ever heard people say, can't we just get, all it's get along? It's water and oil. No. It's, it's a mix. We can't. <laughs> Light does not mix with darkness. Unrighteousness does not mix with righteousness. If you stand for truth, there's going to be a divide. There's going to be people who That's oppose true. you. There always has been. Yep. There always will be. Mm -hmm. But you have a responsibility to do what's right because God will hold you to that Tenable. on Judgment Day. And don't let me, don't, don't be deceived, friends. Every right. person is going to stand before Almighty God and be accountable for the words that they speak and yes. for their actions. Read the book of Proverbs and apply its truths because it tells you God's truth.